another landslide victory in the Bakasi Peninsula. They fight to reclaim the Biafran territory uh, and take full possession of the God-given mineral resources in that area called Bakasi Peninsula. We did on our own. Nines Cameroon and the Nigerian forces joined together go attack the Biafran, uh, sorry, the Black Marine Fighters. That is um, uh, the the what would I call it? Um, the security uh, outfit, Abi. Yeah, the security outfit of um, Biafra Nations League in that uh, Bakasi Peninsula area. Now Cameroon forces go attack. They go use air strike. <laughs> go attack our their camp and scatter everything. People get injured. And since then, uh, the black marine fighters don't tell them, say, now we get this area. Now we know the nooks and crannies of this area. Now we know how to attack and how to retrace. Now we know, uh, uh, now we go decide who stays or who leaves. The first one, the, uh, the, 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 the replacement attack claimed six soldiers, comprises of joint tax force of Nigerians and Cameroon. Another one again, they ambush the Cameroonian forces who is bent on taking over the land that does not belong to them. And 10 people kissed the dust. And that is how they will keep on kissing the dust. Look at the news breaking. Brafran separatist, separatists ambush Cameroonian forces in Bakasi. 10 people kick the bucket. Another headline. Peter Eze sparks up Abuja with his star-studded wedding. Imone, Ubi Kubana, Carlo, Melaye, all in attendance. These are the idiots. They are completely idiots. And I say this thing without no atom of regret. Who have left the Southeast to deteriorating to what it is today. Who have not made any single contribution in that Southeastern zone. The only thing all of them are doing is they have money, they have money, we get money, now we get the town. And people, and the, 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 the area they are developing are busy taking over their businesses and their properties. And nobody dares to say anything. Because they have made themselves stooge in the hands of uh, the Fulanis and the Kabars in Asorok. PDP government blast Governor Wifuru for spending billions welcoming Tunumbu's wife frivolous projects, white teachers are hungry. On a, on a no waiting, uh, Tunumbu's uh, government go commission for a boy state. Wrong way. That is what they spend billions of naira to welcome the nonsense first lady or last lady to go and commission. And people are clapping hands. People are celebrating them. A country that will call party, spend billions of naira while we have out of school children. Commissioning Aboro Park, Tout Park. <laughs> Wrong way. Oh. This airport has been commissioned by uh, Dave Omaha during his own uh, tenure. The only achievement now that people will count now that this guy now we used to campaign in the second time now is that uh, he called. The first lady to come to a boy state and commission wrong way. <laughs> Airport that the churches have turned to their warehouse of worship and praise. That is what they are commissioning. You know. Nobody will show you the inside airport, how it looks like. Just looking for avenue to, to, to squander money. To squander the patrimony of the so called their so called citizens. And people are clapping hand for Lule Mitunumbu. Ogu go by that woman. Bishop Onaga decried blood letting in Southeast. Urges caution. What caution? You see, today you just see what is happening in the Southeast. And none of you have ever come out to challenge the, the status quo of the government of the day who have militarized the Southeast. See yet, people are being killed on daily basis. Can you tell me uh, they increase the number of checkpoints? Number of checkpoints that they never check anything other than stop, pay your money and go. Stop, pay your money and go. No problem. Judgment day is coming. All of us, you know, we understand. 
Another one. Uh, if I kill you today, nothing will happen. DSS officer allegedly assaults journalist over unpaid electricity bill in KB State. <laughs> quack, quack. My people, uh, happy Monday, please. Help me like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Let this video go viral. I don't want to talk too much because this morning, eh, I'm I'm very angry in my spirit. The separatist fighters from the Black Marine Group have ambushed Cameroonian government forces in the Bakasi Peninsula, killing 10 soldiers. The incident occurred two kilometers away from the Rapid the Intervention Battalion barracks in the Isangele subdivision. According to eyewitnesses, the Rapid the Intervention Battalion forces were attempting to invade the pro Biafra militant camp early this morning when they were ambushed on the waterfront. The separatists reportedly well armed and organized launched a surprise attack on the Cameroonian forces, resulting in significant casualties. They never see anything. They want to take the Biafran by surprise. They are not serious. The Black Marine Group, known for its militant stance and advocacy for Biafran independence, has been active in the Bakasi region for several years. This latest attack is seen as a significant escalation of tension between the separatist group and the Cameroonian government forces. The Cameroonian government has yet to issue an official statement on the incident, but sources indicate there that a full-scale investigation is underway. Stay tuned with Okute Daily Talk for more updates at, as these events unfold. After months of meticulous planning and that anticipation, Peter Eze and his beautiful bride, former Mrs. Iroma Ezugo, celebrated their long-awaited farewell wedding themed hashtag becoming the Ezes in an event that sparked up the nation's capital Abuja with its star-studded glamour. The wedding saw the gathering of societal heavyweights and prominent figures, including Oji Uzo Kalo, e Money, Ubi Kubana, Kennedy Ifekudu, Abalanze, Ifanyi Odi, Anyi Chooks, Dino Melaye, Prince Shuaib Abubaka Audu, Osita Izunaso, Uke Ezea, Foretex, Uche Ekunife, Chris Uche San, Igwe Ogadagidi, and many other prominent Nigerians. That is the only thing we know the Igbos. Making noise everywhere. Following the success of the couple's break, uh, taking uh, proposal and the stunning uh, traditional and civil wedding ceremonies held in February, April, and September consecutively, guests eagerly awaited their white wedding. They had to endure a five month wait, which finally ended on, on October 19, and it was well worth it as every detail of the celebration exuded the grand door befitting an award-winning master's graduate of University of International Business and Economics, Beijing and loyal head of Senator Oji Uzokalo, a Phobis rated billionaire, former governor of Anambara State, sorry, former go governor of Ibe State, and current senator of the Fulani Republic of Nigeria. In keeping with their strong spiritual foundation, Peter and his charming Dr. Trent Bride held their wedding ceremony at the Church of the Assumption Catholic Church in Asokoro. From the morning of the wedding, it was clear that Abuja residents were in for a spectacular event. Peter, Iroma, and their lively entourage traveled in a Rolls Royce led convoy to the church where the couple exchanged their marital vows under the spiritual guidance of Reverend Father Stephen Omale. To the admiration of the congregation, Peter and his lovely bride were pronounced husband and wife in the presence of distinguished witnesses, including Senator Oji Uzo Kahlo and his wife, Mrs. Ifunanya Kahlo, as well as Ambassador Elijah and Mrs. Udo Unyaba. 
following the church ceremony, an unforgettable, unforgettable uh, uh, reception took place at the beautiful decorated BMO event center in Wuse, creating a memorable experience for all in attendance. Driving in white, white uh, Rolls Royce and convoy of black SUVs, the lovebirds, alongside their groomsmen and bridesmaids, proceeded to the event center where a grand reception awaited, as planned by top rated event management company, Event by Inez. A spectacular aspect of the wedding were the three sets of groomsmen who appear separately in their black suit, dapper black and white abada, and lined up side by side to welcome the couples to the magnificent uh, stage, where which uh, uh, where okay where which uh, was already set for them. The atmosphere atmosphere was set for arrival of the perfect pair, with the dignities already seated while savouring. The sound provided by prolific DJ OJ blended with mouth watering dishes made by excellent catering service and two other caterers. Rip cracking jokes was already delivered by MC popular comedian Sarikin Darea, setting the tone for a perfect day of celebration. Everyone could notice the love chemistry between the two love beds as they made their entry into the venue dressed in their respective classic white tuxedo suit with black pants and gorgeous white bridal dress. Her spin as Peter and his adorable bride danced through the asshole created by the groomsmen to the stage, setting the tone for the beginning of the event. Opening prayer was said, followed by an inspiring and heartwarming address by the chairman of the occasion, Chief uh, Kenneth Ife Kudu, who showered elegies and prayers on the heavenly mad bear. To, con to cut uh, the whole long story short, their wedding was an abs absolute blast. As after the party commenced to the wide jubilation of everyone, knowing that every moment was as magical as they envisioned. PDP blast with Furu for spending lovely Chile. The People's Democratic Party PDP in Ebony State has berated the APC led government of Ebony State. Over the government penchant for spending a bonus people's money on frivolities. Things that don't matter to the Ebon society for now. Whereas the major areas that need urgent attention have been either completely abandoned or treated with le levity. In a statement issued on behalf of the party by a social media influencer and a media consultant, Mr. Mwoba Cheka Mwoba said PDP has watched the government of Ebony State under Governor Winfuru recently and currently spending billions on frivolous projects and the one that just took place, which is the hosting of the wife of the president of Nigeria, is more disturbing. He further said PDP doesn't have a problem with the hosting of the president's wife, but with the amount of public money that was sunk into it when the people of the state grown in hunger and abject poverty. Mr. Moba revealed that the government is here to pay teachers in Ebony State. Their October salaries, despite being in the middle of the month of November 2024, the statement reads in part. The People's Democratic Party PDP in Ebony State uses this opportunity to berate the APC-led government of a boy state over the government penchant for spending a boy people's money on frivolities. Things that don't matter to them or the society for now, whereas the major areas have been neglected. We have watched the government recently and currently spending billions on those frivolous projects and the one that just took place, which is uh, the hosting of the wife of the so called president of the Nigeria, is more disturbing. We don't have problem with hosting the president's wife, but 
with the amount of public money funds that are being sunk into it when the people of the state are growing in hunger and abject poverty. It bothers the same mind a great deal to know that the government could recommission an airport project that had already been commissioned, exactly what I said two years ago, using the face of the president's wife as a decoy to embark on a wasteful and a theatric outing is what we frown at. More so as the government is yet to pay teachers in the state. Their October salaries yet in the middle of the month of November 2024. This is a case of government inhumanity to its populace. It is on this premise and more that we urge the government to backtrack from wasteful expenditures and begin to meet the people of the Boy State at the points of their collective needs. It is alarming also to note that the people of Ebony don't feel the impact of government yet in the face of the physical abundance uh, the government sw uh, swims in. The PDP in Ebony is bothered about all these inglorious events taking shape in the state and changes the administration of uh, Governor Wifuru to rise to the mandate of tackling the immediate needs of the state of our people in this time of great economic uh, distress. Moba Chika, Moba for Eboin PDP. Bishop Onika and the Christ blood letting in Southeast and urges caution. The Catholic Bishop of Enugu Diocese, Most Reverend Dr. Callistus Onaga, has expressed worry over the level of blood letting in Southeast. He decries especially politically motivated killings in the Southeast zone warning that anyone engaging in such an unholy act will never go unpunished. Bishop Onaga spoke on Sunday while delivering a sermon during the Thanksgiving Mass to herald the empowerment program of the Senate representing, uh, sorry, Senator representing Enugu East Ma, uh, Senatorial District, Sir Kevin Chuku at the Holy Ghost Cathedral Enugu. He particularly expressed his man over the brutal murder of the senatorial candidates of the Labour Party in 2023 senatorial election in the state, Barrister Uyibo Chuku, which led to the emergence of his younger brother and the incumbent senator, Kevin Chuku, as well as the murder of the chairman of Ubete Market Traders Association, Stephen Aniago, among other killings. Taking his sermon from the Book of Mark, Chapter 13, verse, uh, verses 24 to 32. The bishop urged Christians to imbibe the spirit of tolerance and forgiveness, stressing that every human being must give account of his sojourn on earth. Hence, the need to keep the commandments of God. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us always know that one day every one of us will die and we do not know at the hour or the day. This is a period of reconciliation and going back to God may teach us forgiveness. The end will come and may we be conscious of this. According to Bishop, he said. Also in attendance, we are Senator Victor Ume, representing Anambra Central. Senator Uke Eza, representing Enugu North. Senator Osta Ngu, representing Enugu West. Right Reverend Daniel Oranya, Bishop of Eha Amufu Anglican Diocese, among other dignitaries. If I kill you today, nothing will happen, DSS officer, assault journalist, over unpaired electricity bill. A Department of State Service DSS officer, Daoda Awalu Taora, assigned to the KB State Command, has been accused of physically assaulting journalist Malam Shoaib Zubairo, a correspondent for the authority newspaper. Following a dispute over an outstanding electricity bill. According to Vanguard, the confrontation began when Taora, who had paid only 4,000 naira of the 5,000 electricity bill, was confronted by Zubairu and other tenants over the unpaired balance. The situation quickly escalated, with Taora allegedly slapping Zubairu multiple times and threatening his life. Asserting that his position 
within the DSS would protect him from any repercussions. The Bible recounted the incident saying Taora occupies two apartments, each built at 2,500 monthly. The total electricity bill for the tenants is 10,000 naira, and while everyone else paid their share, it was discovered that Taora had unpaid. When we approached him to resolve the issue, he became furious, slapped me six times in the presence of other tenants and threatened my life. He said, You have received a beating for nothing and you will die for nothing. If I kill you today, nothing will happen. The buyer now suffering from aggravated eye issues due to the assault, expressed concerns about his safety, describing living in the same building as Taura uh, as increasingly uh, perilous. A neighbor, Mayam Aminu, witnessed the altercation and confirmed the, the severity of the attack, stating he slapped him twice and jacked his cloth, trying to strangle him. We had to run out and call other neighbors to rescue the journalist. Another resident, Mala Mariru Usman, also supported the viral account. I was in my room when I was called to help intervene. After the issue, I suggested they settle amicably, but the journalist insisted he had been cheated and would take action. As a Muslim, if I am called to testify anywhere, I will do so truthfully because I witnessed what happened. The battle had filed a lawsuit against Aura for the assault and death threats. The case is expected to be heard in court once the suspect is served with a summons. And here, plus other headlines, and I don't hear them how it take B. So like, share, comment, and make sure you keep subscribing for more interesting videos coming your way. My name is Siliman Amandia Neze. Have a nice day. May the good Lord continue to bless us all. The Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This week, it shall be well with all of us.